Hello everybody, I'm Nick and in this video I'm going to show you how you can deploy your server-side Blazor application in Azure. And I'm also going to show you how you can use the managed Signal R service in Azure for your Blazor application in order for it to scale way, way better than it would without using one. This video is part of my Blazor series, so if you don't want to miss any episodes, please subscribe and hit the sub notification bell to get notifications when I publish a new episode. So let's just jump straight into uh, the Azure portal. Here I have my code ready to be deployed. Uh, but first I need to create an app service plan and an app service. So uh, here I have my Azure portal and I have created a, a resource group here called uh, YouTube Tutorials UKS because it's going to be in uh, the UK South region. So what I need to do now is I need to go to the uh, add button here and I need to find what I want to create. I want to create a web app. This is uh, the one I'm looking for from, from Microsoft. And I'm going to go, uh, it will be mostly uh, free, anything uh, you see in this video. I'm going to also explain what's the difference with the paid packages for SignalR. But at least for the web app, I'm going to use a free uh, tier. So um, here is my subscription and my resource group name. And my web app name will be Nick Blazor. I hope that's not taken. Okay, it's not taken. So, and then I need to choose my uh, runtime. I'm going to go with Donor Core 3 because that's what we are using for our server-side Blazor application. I'm going to go with Windows. It could be Linux. It doesn't really matter. It's Donor Core. It's close, close platform. And then I'm going to say UK South here. And I'm going to choose that as my region because it's the closest to me. I live in London. And then I'm going to create a new app service plan. I'm going to change the size of it though. This... Uh, Thing we're going to pop up. I'm going to say dev test. I'm going to choose an F1, which is a free tier. I get one gigabyte of rem memory and 60 minutes per day in terms of compute. It's more than enough for me to demonstrate this. So I'm going to say apply. And then I don't actually need to configure anything else. I'm just going to turn off uh, application insights because we are not going to use that. And then just say review and create. And just click the create button. And this will create my web app and the service plan uh, to support that web app. Now, while this is happening, let me show you in uh, my um, IDE what I'm going to do. By the way, for you asking in the comments, this is JetBrains uh, Rider. It's the ID I'm using. I love it because it's the same thing on my Mac and on my Windows machines. And it's essentially Visual Studio with ReSharper, so that's why I'm using it. So in JetBrains Rider, you actually can have plugins. So the same way you can have extensions in Visual Studio. Let me just open any random file and then say plugins here. And then one of the plugins I have, it's the Azure Toolkit for Rider, which is what I'm using, provided by JetBrains. And this will allow me to do everything from my ID. If you're using Visual Studio, you have something equivalent, so you can use that. All I need to do is choose the project I want to publish and then say publish, publish to Azure. And then once I click that, I will uh, be, because I'm authenticating my machine on Azure, it will automatically pick up any app configuration I have in the cloud. And sure enough, it automatically picks up my YouTube tutorials, UKS and Nick Blazor as the name. I could, of course, create a new one if I wanted to. I have the tools to do that here, but I don't need to. I'm just going to create this. So I'm going to pick this one up. I'm also going to add a step before this thing actually publishes, which is the build solution. And with that out of the way, I'm going to just say run. And what this is going to do is just take exactly what we have made in this Blazor Fundamental series and just put it in the cloud. I'm going to wait until this finishes and then we're going to browse this as a website. So it says that our site is now published. Let me just copy that URL and go back to my browser and just paste this. And it should be accessible now. It's going to take some time to start up now because it's the first time anybody's accessing it. But as you can see, our website is now deployed. It works as expected. And I'm sure if I go here, I should be able to just log in as well because I also deployed the, the database. And yes, as you can see, everything is here. It all works. But if I open my DevTools and I go on the Network tab and I refresh this page, you're going to see that the negotiation on the Blazor um, a hub that is, which is where the SignalR uh, connection is happening is against my actual application on the web app. We're not using a managed SignalR sa service for this. We're using the resources of the web app to host that. And now this might be 
okay for a small application, but if you want to scale your application to thousands of users, this won't hold up because you're just using too many resources in terms of your web app. So what you need to do instead is use a managed SignalR service. And I'm going to show you exactly how you can do this. Actually, the code changes are surprisingly minimal. So the first thing I need to do is I need to close this and then go in my resource group. And in that resource group, I'm going to say add and I'm going to say signal R service, the one by Microsoft, this one. And I'm going to say create and I'm going to configure it. I'm going to say Nick Blazor signal R and then choose UK South as the location. I want it to be in the same data center for this connection uh, speed to be super fast. I'm going to go with a free tier, but you could choose the standard if you want. And in fact, let's just see what's the difference between the two. In the free tier, you actually don't pay anything. It's all over SSL, but you only have 20,000 messages per day per unit. And you only have a single unit on the free tier. And you can have up to 20 connections at the same time. Uh, and you only have a single unit, as we said. On the standard one, you can actually have up to 100 units. And then you have a million messages per day per unit. And 1,000 connections per unit. So this can actually scale up to 100,000 connections. Obviously, you're paying for that. And I think it's like one point uh, something, $1.2 um, dollars per day per unit. I think it's something like that. Uh, you can get a more detailed view of the pricing on the dedicated page. Uh, I'm going to go for free uh, now because if you're following this, I don't want you to pay any money. It's going to be fine to demonstrate how this goes. And on the service mode, you can choose either default or classic. I'm going to go with default. Uh, don't worry about that. And then we're just going to say review and create and just create. Now, while this is being created, I'm going to go on Rider and we need to do some code changes, but they're very minimal. The first thing I need to do is go on NuGet and I'm going to say uh, find Microsoft.Azure.SignalR and I'm going to add this package called Microsoft.Azure.SignalR. I'm going to say yes. Okay, so the package is now added. I need to go to the app settings now to add a few configurations. I could do this in code, but I want you to see how you can actually do this in your app settings on JSON. So I'm going to say Azure, which is a top level property. And then in here we have Signal R. And in Signal R, we're going to say enabled. True. And then connection string. And in here, we're going to put the connection string for our SignalR service in Azure. Let's see if that's created already. Okay, so it is. I can go here and I can go to keys. And I'm going to copy the connection string of my primary connection. Don't worry, um, you are not able to access this by the time you see this video. It's already deleted, so don't really try. Let me just copy that. This is what you want, the whole thing. And you're just going to paste that here. And with that, let's see the code changes we need to enable our Blazor to use SignalR. All you need to do is, let's just do it up here. After the server side Blazor, I'm going to do services.add SignalR and then add Azure SignalR. And in terms of code changes, that's all. You don't need to change anything else. No, the exact same code. I'm just going to go ahead and I have my published profile here. So I don't need to change anything. I'm just going to say run this new published profile and essentially redeploy your code in Azure with those new changes. So I'm going to let this do that. And once it's finished, we're going to go ahead and see how this looks. So our code is now deployed. So if I go back here and I just copy that URL again, I forgot to copy it and paste it here. I should be able to access the website. Again, it's after a deployment. It will take some time to cold start it. But as you can see, I'm still logged in. The application is here. Again, everything is working as we saw before, all the history and stuff. And if I open my uh, networking tools and I go to network and I refresh this application, you will now see that the, uh, that the WebSocket connection is actually connecting. Let me just make this bigger. It's connecting to the managed Signal R service, not on the web app service. So now I essentially pushed all the responsibility of the connection management 
to the managed singular R service and I can now confidently scale my application. And the good thing is you can actually use all the analytics and the metrics that you can get from this because if I just revisit this page uh, in a minute, you're going to be able to see exactly how many requests come here, how many connections you have, the total message count, but just give it some time and I'm going to show you. Let me just refresh it a couple of times. So as you can see here, I had five server requests on one client and then I had 22 messages posted, which is probably all the requests to load the page. And then things like the current count updates, these are one message each. And essentially any user interaction is a message. So you need to be very careful. You need to see how much you average out and then scale appropriately. And of course you can change at any time uh, from a free tier to a standard tier and scale for more as you go. That's all I want to show you for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Special thanks to my GitHub sponsors for making these videos possible. If you want to support me as well, you're going to find the link in the description down below. Leave a like if you like this video, subscribe for more content like this, ring the bell as well to get notifications, and I'll see you in the next video. Keep coding.